Hi guys, it's Reagan and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. Would you believe it? It's the evening, <laughs> which you might be able to tell by, you know, the darkness, but this is the start of a new reading vlog, which I'm really excited about. This month, I actually, in general, just have a goal of reading some hyped new releases. And the book I'm gonna be reading for this vlog is one of my most anticipated books of the year. I'm holding it with a lot of high expectations. And I'm also a little nervous it's not going to deliver, but I'm really looking forward to reading it and sharing my thoughts and feelings with you guys. So without further ado, let's chat about the book. So the book I want to read over the course of this vlog is Book of Night by Holly Black. Random, but shout out to Book of the Month for coming through with this stellar release. I always love when my most anticipated releases sneak into the selections for the month. But this is Holly Black's first adult fantasy release. It's urban fantasy. It centers like a dark market that centers around like trading shadows and magic. We follow our main character who's like trying to stay, I don't know, like keep her head down. She's a bartender, but then she gets wrapped up in something when an individual from her past appears once again. I really hope this is full of ambiance and good angsty romance. That's all I flip and want. <laughs> and I keep trying to find it. And it's just some of the books I read recently just haven't fully delivered. So we shall see if Book of Night will deliver. I keep accidentally wanting to call it House of Night, which is very wrong. That's a completely different series. But anyway, I'm really looking forward to reading this. That is the plan for this vlog. I have wrapped up work. I'm starting this vlog like in the evening. So I now need to go make dinner, probably gonna watch some TV and stuff. And then I will come back and I'll actually start this book where the majority of the vlog will be taking place tomorrow and the next day as you would anticipate. But welcome, let's get cracking. Mochi and I'm about to start an episode of Business Proposal. Hang out with Millie. And so it begins. Good morning, friends. Matilda just absolutely lounging while I was running around like a mad woman this morning. Also, I do have thoughts about that book. I have been doing some reading, but first, I apologize for the lack of check-ins. Uh, this morning was a bit chaotic. I had an electrician. I got a quote for a new window because it's like, we think there might be some like water stuff going on with it. And it's causing a very strange smell, to be honest. So it's a little offensive. Uh, among other things, and now I find that it's 2 p.m. and I need to make lunch, but I feel like I handled all the stuff of the morning and it's done. So that's a big sigh of relief. And tonight is especially exciting because as you guys have seen in my past vlogs, the walls have been getting painted and I can now put up my bookshelves and I'm gonna film like my organization video tomorrow. So tonight I'm gonna put the shelves themselves up and I'm so excited about it. Lunch today is a Reagan classic. I just make a little bit of skirt steak. I had some leftover rice from dinner, but usually I use like couscous, but I'm gonna use up the rice I have. A little arugula salad, feta, olives, red onion, and then I'm gonna to top this with steak. I also have hummus, which I need to grab. We'll mix it all together. And a bon appetit. It is about to start pouring. You can just kind of like feel it. In the sky, in the air, just the overall vibe. So that means I'm gonna pour myself a cup of coffee and get to reading because I have a good amount of reading I want to accomplish before I focus on my bookshelves later tonight. I have read about 50 pages of <laughs> The House of Night. No, it is not. The Book of Night. I want to read a bit more before my initial check-in just to give you like initial thoughts and vibes. Um, so far, I feel like they're neutral. Like I'm interested, but I don't know if I've had enough to like get a full sense of how I'm going to feel about this book. Um, sometimes you just know right away, like within the first chapter, like a book is for you. And then sometimes you just need a bit more time. And it's like, nothing I've read is bad. I just don't know if it's going to be like good or great quite yet, you know? So I'll let you know in a bit of initial thoughts. Once I get more reading under my belt, cheers to coffee. Goodbye. Hi friends. So I am here with my first update of Book of Night. Uh, by Holly Black. I have passed the 60 page mark. I feel like I can give some initial thoughts. The thing about this book and why I feel like it's taken me so long is because, okay, it's because it's kind of taking a while 
to it's like very slow burn in the beginning it's really about kind of like setting you up with an idea of how the magic system works get you situated in the main character's life it's definitely not rushing anything which honestly generally i don't mind at all and i do feel like that aspect of it is effective like i feel like i understand the motivations and like some aspects of like the character's life in that which i feel like will be good for when the plot does begin to thicken because i'll be much more rooted in her reality but at the same time though i'm reading and i'm like mildly confused not confused with the book but confused because there's only this book is only 300 pages long and i'm almost a third of the way through and i don't really feel like a lot has happened there's been some hints at things but no clear like x is gonna lead to y like let's strap in like it's gonna be a wild ride kind of thing that being said i am enjoying what i'm reading so far so this book follows our main character charlie and charlie is like a criminal on the mend if you will quickly get this sense that she has a very murky past in the criminal underground world but she's trying to get out of it and currently she's working as a bartender she lives with her younger sister she has a boyfriend of one year who she likes he seems nice and normal though very quiet she's relatively happy with her life but she also is kind of the type of person who will self-destruct her own life she's always someone who seemingly in her mind is like looking for something interesting which inevitably turns her life upside down so that is definitely a component of this book there is a fantasy element and this is an urban fantasy story i would say definitely to the t it definitely has this like seediness to it this darkness a lot of the book also takes place at night because our main character works late nights because she's a bartender and also her connection to the underworld as being some kind of thief is my guess also kind of makes it have like this like dark vibe like it's late at night the streets are empty sort of vibe what does intrigue me so far is this magic it's all associated with shadows so it seems in unclear amount of time ago people have discovered that some people have the ability to interact or even harness shadows and some people are able to make their shadows kind of like come alive there's essentially three different branches of shadow magic the first is people who can like alter the looks of other people's shadows so like there's cosmetic purposes of this like some people want their shadow to look like a dragon or such and such um they can also there's also a drug element to this i think you can infuse shadows with kind of a euphoric drug-like experience so these types of magic wielders kind of deal in that there are puppeteers who can as you'd imagine who can use their shadow like a puppet and control it like a puppet and then the last is a more mysterious group of shadow mask wearers and their exact magic is kind of unclear very mysterious like the group of magic users themselves our main character does not have shadow magic and she's kind of but she was involved in like the shadow dealing world because there's a lot of black market stuff going on for example you can actually get your shadow stolen and then it could be resold on the black market so there is money to be made not only the ability to wield shadows but like dealing in shadows and also dealing in like magical information like books on the market as well it also seems like the magic component in this world is like newer and so it's changed society a lot of interesting ways but it's still continuing to evolve and i do like the modern very urban fantasy aspect of how the fantasy is interacting with the world like for example there was a reference to the met gala and all the celebrities had like their shadows altered to match their dress and it just seems like if there was magic founded in this world like especially like magic like this like i can see that happening 100 percent. so i thought that was a nice touch that being said though in terms of plot outside of like introducing us to charlie her kind of motivations and a little bit of backstory about herself and like kind of how she as a character works and introducing us a bit to the magic like not much has happened there seems to be hints of something going on in the underworld and she's also stumbled upon a murder but like this also seems part of the course to her life in some way so it doesn't seem like incredibly out of place so i'm waiting for like the record scratch if you will and i do feel like it's going to be coming but so far it's definitely vibey i don't see how this book is anything like the night circus i can see how it can be compared to ninth house though i wouldn't say the writing is as like beautiful as perhaps i was expecting from holly black but i do think it is very engaging and i do feel like holly black does a slow burn pretty successfully and i think the pacing of this really matches up with holly black's like slow burn style so 
we'll see what's gonna unfold. I feel like I have a lot of this book left because not much has happened, but I also don't have much of this book left at the same time. But anyway, that's like a general overview, some initial thoughts. I'm curious to see how this is gonna continue to evolve. I'm gonna get back to reading right now. Matilda's sitting in her chair, watching the rain, an absolute vibe. <laughs> Also this weather, this stormy, gloomy weather has been the perfect accoutrement to this book. And I've just passed 100 page mark and things are definitely heating up. I actually have decided I think I like the pacing. I like that it's kind of a windy story. And I think recently, let me flip you around. I have been reading books that have like really fast pacing and I haven't been enjoying it because I never feel like I'm like super rooted in the story. So I guess this book is kind of at least so far an example of like taking the time to really set things up. So you're kind of like, not just curious, but I feel like the Holly Black's doing a good job like leading us along and slowly revealing stuff. The shadows themselves also have like almost like a vampire-esque-ness to them. And I do like the seedy setting and something else I really like, which I feel like makes me feel much more connected to the main character is there are chapters that are flashbacks to her past. We get a view on her childhood, kind of the household that she was raised in, but also ultimately how she got involved in being a con woman and kind of the slippery slope she found herself in. And those chapters are really, really interesting and also provide a lot of great context to the present day chapters. And I feel like kind of rounds out this urban fantasy story in a way that I'm appreciating so far. And I feel like it has more of a character focus to it that I think so far at least is pretty successful. I'm also enjoying that I feel like she is like an accomplished con woman. Like she's trying to leave that behind, but like she's, she was good at what she did. And she's not like, and I don't find her narration style to be annoying at all. I find her actually very intimidating as a person, which I think so far is also working. I am interested and invested in the story in the way that like, I really wanna know what the heck is gonna happen next. I'm hoping it kind of leads into a larger conspiracy that I feel like will likely just be revealed at the end and then we're gonna have to wait to the next book, which I can be okay with. I can be okay being strung along a bit as long as I'm hooked onto the plot, you know? But anyway, I'm actually gonna do more reading. It's pouring out and I have to go outside to get my bookshelves, so I needed to stop raining so I can bring my shelves inside this house because they're like in our garage workshop area, which is not like you have to go outside to access it. So I hope it stops at least just for a little bit so I can get my bookshelves. It is time for dinner. Step one is I have two chicken thighs, one stuffed with goat cheese, one has Cajun seasoning. The other has cayenne, garlic powder, salt and pepper, Gotta be roasted 35 minutes, 400. Um, there's Matilda, angry at something in the backyard, and I'm about to chop up some Brussels sprouts and fingerling potatoes. <laughs> Yay! quick status chicken and brussels sprouts are in the oven these cook solo 15 minutes and then i put the fingerling potatoes in which i seasoned up with olive oil salt pepper garlic powder rosemary and thyme so should be good and uh these only need like 20 25 minutes so i'm trying not to burn them this time i ate a lot of my brussels sprouts already but i forgot to film dinner is ready i'm gonna go watch real housewives of new jersey now it's time folks millie is in here confused but we have cleared out this space because it's time to put the bookshelves up putting them up can confirm these bookshelves are a lot heavier when they're already assembled but two are in two are about to go up let's do this the struggle when your bookshelves are like four inches shorter than your ceilings, you have to be really careful when you lift them up. <laughs> and so begins.
Shelf one, success. Let's go carry shelf two. Wow, shot of clay drilling no stud there will there be a stud here there's a stud there all right we're on to bookshelf three. Oh, you're doing this alone clay <laughs> how to show up for the camera no i just, just <laughs> had to do it Bookshelf three, done. Looky there, it might be 11 p.m. But the bookshelves are up. Yay. So tomorrow's task is putting all my books away. Ah, they've been in storage for two months, two and a half months, ever since I moved in. We moved in. Exciting stuff. Shelves are built. It is nearing my bedtime, but I am going to do more reading. My goal is to get to about the 50% mark, which only is like 20 more pages, which would be no problem. It's been a minute since I've read like a shorter fantasy book and I won't lie, it's kind of great because I feel like I've made so much progress even though I've only read 150 pages. Like, it's a nice feeling. Um, well, let's talk about the book. So. Things are definitely starting to heat up. I'm definitely intrigued in the book itself. I feel like the shadow magic concept is pretty fascinating. I like that there's different classes of shadow users. I like that the society that's surrounding magic still feels pretty new. So there's like a lot to kind of learn and discover there. And it all is also kind of shady. <laughs> no pun intended. On top of that, the plot is getting more interesting. It's starting to slowly reveal itself. I will say, I kind of saw the pieces that Holly Black laid out in front of us, and I kind of guessed the initial twists that I feel like, or the initial discoveries, but just because I guessed it doesn't make it not interesting. So I'm looking forward to see like where things are gonna play out from here. I like the overall vibe of this book. I like that it's like grimy, but it's not too over the top, but it does feel pretty honest to the overall like setting that our character, it feels very real in that way. So like, I appreciate it in that. It doesn't feel too over the top. Like sometimes I read urban fantasy stories, like I'm thinking, for example, like House of Breath and Sky, if that's what it's called. And like, I think of, what is her name? Bryce, like Bryce's character, like doesn't really feel like a real character, but I feel like these individuals are like running around our world, but there is just like a magical component. So that element I do feel pretty connected. Um, I'm enjoying the ride so far. I'm gonna keep reading. I, st I mean, I only have 180 pages left, so I'm also just like curious how much can really happen. So, so far I like it, but I'm hoping the payoff is there or the cliffhanger is there, but time will tell. So I'll see you guys in the morning. I can't wait to organize my bookshelves. It's gonna be sweaty, but I can't wait. Coffee, book to do some reading. It's the calm before the storm. There's Matilda before I begin putting my bookshelves together, which is going to take, I think a while, but who knows, maybe I'll surprise myself. But I wanna to get to page 200 first of this book. So here is my life right in this current moment. I am filming my bookshelf organization. As you saw in the previous clips, I brought all these in all them out of the boxes which took a few hours and then there's the aftermath of all of the boxes um but soon all of these are gonna be able to go up which is so exciting but i'm gonna take a lunch break first between then and now get some more energy 
quick ramen intermission. Making the classic egg, QP mayo, garlic combo. I wish I had some radish kimchi. I don't, but this will still be delicious. hours later guys I have finished let's show you what's going on I still have my book spine and I do have some space so that's always good but let's let's show you what's been happening in here all right I did do a whole video so it should be already live but I have this shelf which is primarily YA and some things my phone because I filmed a TikTok <laughs> my filming and reading chair i did order a bigger piece of furniture in here for this and this chair is going to actually go in clay's office which i'm very excited about but here is like my fantasy shelf um and then kind of my literary fiction contemporary shelf if you will if you will but i of course also have that book spine in the family room so i have more books but this is this. I'm really excited. I need my mirror back in here. But this room is coming together. It definitely needs a bigger rug, more furniture. Um, but I feel like my books coming going up really did a lot for the space. So library room in progress. It's Friday night at 7.30 and I'm drinking a latte. Um, a little Friday night treat, but Clay and I's plan tonight, outside of me reading more of my book, which I owe you guys a reading update because I am two thirds of the way through, is now that all of the stuff, or rather stuff being paint and stuff, we're kind of working to get our house sort of back together. We kind of just have stuff everywhere. So we're going room by room and just trying to get it as situated as we can. We started, there's Matilda, little backyard girly. We started in our bedroom our rug was kind of like pushed under so we picked up the bed a bunch put it where it needed to go also matilda got stairs because she's getting old she rarely uses them because she is an absolute daredevil she like kick flips off the bed and trying to get her to use the stairs um anyway um but yeah it's nice to have the rug back out it makes all the difference we have our plant which is starting to bloom and this room is kind of like where it needs to be at the moment my second plan of action is moving this into the family room and swapping these two pieces of furniture that chestnut thing now that my bookshelves are up this it can go in here which i think will it'll make more sense so i think we're gonna gonna work on that and then clean this room and uh get my desk all back together it's chaos it's chaos <laughs> all right it's basically midnight um and i'm about to go read and i owe you guys a reading update but I wanted to show you everything we were able to accomplish tonight. My friend Emily stopped by for a bit, so we ended up being a bit slower than normal. We did some cleaning, we did some stuff. Let me show you, let me show you. A lot of it's behind the scenes because we had to do some more unpacking post painters, but let me, let me show you what's going on. There's Clay with records to put away. But a big change in this room is that we finally were able to move this piece of furniture in here. And I think scale wise, it looks much nicer i also hung that mirror and i think overall just like really helps the room feel fuller which i really like moving into the dining room we moved this piece of furniture in here which i think just overall makes a bit more sense we have our liquor cabinet ultimately we want to get better record storage one day for our record player but for now this is kind of where we're at we have these chairs clay hung up 
that curtain rod. Looks great, Clay, good job. And then in here, we really just cleaned. You can't tell too much. Oh, one of our cabinet doors fell off. That was a bit of a setback. Yeah, old, old man. <laughs> but and broke. So, you know, for every win, there's a loss. One thing that happened in here is we moved the mirror back. It was kind of living in the dining room temporarily. So this is exciting. And this room, I just can't get over it. I just feel like it feels so much more complete now. I took off the fire grate. We're gonna get a new one. The one that was there came with the house and then my chair. And then we decided to actually move the rug that was in the guest bedroom in Clay's office just to kind of help ground the space a bit because Clay uses this room every day versus the guest room isn't used as often, obviously. We hung this picture. That's exciting. And uh, not much has changed in here outside of bringing in some pictures that we're going to hang on the wall, which we'll do tomorrow. I promise we worked much harder than it appears. But uh, we got a lot of stuff off our to-do list, which is great. We're really excited. We got a bunch of new cleaning products too. I got this big box from Grove. So I have all these new glass cleaning containers and I just feel so, I don't know, like I've had my life together. I have my <laughs> reusable glass cleaning containers and I couldn't be more thrilled. One thing I forgot to mention I got. So the ceilings in here are kind of tall and my light is not very strong. So it was like hard to read. So I bought, I got this little directional reading lamp to help me out. I've officially reached like old lady status and I am thrilled about it. So I set that up, reading session, ready to go. Matilda's here. We're gonna have a cozy night, get a good night's sleep, finish this book tomorrow morning. Good morning, everyone. I owe you an update. I read, here it is, to about page 200 last night and I'm gonna work to finish this book this morning. Hi friends, so I owe you a reading update and I also have my cup of coffee, which is great. It's my favorite time of the day. Right when I wake up, I pour myself a cup of coffee and I sit and I read. It's the best time of the day. So I'm officially two thirds of the way through Book of Night and I'm kind of of two minds about this book. Some of, some of it is due to my expectations. Some of it is due to just the book itself. So first and foremost I'm liking what I'm reading and by no means is there anything like glaringly wrong with this book but it's also not as like it hasn't drawn me in quite as much as I thought and I think at this point it does feel like the plot is pretty smaller in scale which ultimately is fine but I guess I just was expecting something a little more impactful like what's going on is interesting but it's also not mind-boggling like it's it just appears very straightforward like one last gig to rule them all sort of situation and it's not even that big of a gig it's due to a circumstance that i also found to be like pretty obvious at the beginning of the book like there's still 100 pages left so perhaps there's going to be like a big twist which could be interesting. The strength of the story continues to be the magic and the concept. I think this underworld with this shadow magic, I think is really cool. I like that the shadow magic itself can be pretty dangerous because the more powerful your shadow can become, it technically can like gain its own autonomy and possibly separate from you and then go on like a murderous rampage. So I think like the concept of these different types of shadow wielders and then the ultimate consequence that could occur and then also having like almost a secondary conscious like associated with your shadow I think is a pretty cool concept and I do feel like that part of the book is really effective. The last thing I'll mention is the writing. The writing in this book is not bad but it's also not what I was expecting in terms of like Holly Black. I really enjoy Holly Black's writing. I've read a few of her other books. I want to say four and I'd say the other books I had were marked more with like more of a more beautiful lyrical style writing like really pretty um and i wouldn't say this book has that and i don't necessarily feel like i can say that's a detriment but i do feel like i was kind of expecting that going in and i'll also say this book is compared market standpoint like the marketing team was like this is like ninth house and the night circus and i can see definitely the parallels to ninth house from like the darkness of it all it's not so much like college secret society dark academia um sort of thing which would be more by direct parallel to ninth house but i can see some connections but like when i hear night circus i immediately assume oh the writing's gonna be like lush and beautiful and atmospheric and that is not the style of this book 
at all, I don't think. It, it, it's, it's not bad writing, it's just that's not what she was going for stylistically with this book, in my opinion. Um, anyway, I have about 100 pages left, so I'm going to try to finish this this morning. I'm curious to see how it's all going to wrap up. I'm hoping something kind of pivots near the tail end here. There's a, there's a, I feel like what's going to happen is we're going to get to the end, like the very end, and something interesting is going to happen, and you'll be like, oh, this was all just book one setup kind of vibes, which ultimately is fine as long as the next books are better. So anyway, I'm going to get to reading now. That's my reading update. Good morning, happy Saturday. On the weekends, I've literally just started dressing like a mom on the go. Skorts, an incredible invention. Hair clip, genius, pulls your hair out of your face. Um, but Clay and I are actually about to go watch the new Doctor Strange movie, A, and uh, I did read to page 250 of the Book of Night. So I'm gonna finish it when I get home from Doctor Strange. My feelings haven't really changed like it's good but i do feel like i'm missing something essentially is currently where i'm sitting you know matilda's having a lazy saturday because her tongue is out <laughs> this is a newer thing she's been doing in her older age i just look at her she's asleep and half her tongue is sticking out of her mouth you enjoying the sun girlfriend good we have arrived Hi friends, it's the next day and I wanted to wrap up this vlog. First and foremost, random, I did see Doctor Strange and honestly my feelings about Doctor Strange are kind of the same feelings I have about Book of Night in that it had a lot of good ideas but I felt the execution just was not perfect, you know? But let's talk about ultimately what I feel about Book of Night and that in summary. I liked the pacing. I liked the background we got on our main character. I appreciate the flashbacks to her youth, kind of seeing and exploring how she got wrapped up into becoming a con artist to begin with. I find the concept of the shadow magic to be really interesting. I do feel like I would have enjoyed more background on functionally how some of the aspects of the shadow magic work. I feel like we kind of just got glimpses, but that could also be a result of the fact that our main character in book one just isn't super close to a lot of the like nitty gritty information. But nonetheless, I do wish there was more information there. But ultimately what kind of fell flat, this book was not bad, but it also wasn't like the five star read I was wanting it to be. It's really just like the plot. I felt like everything ultimately felt a little straightforward. Like nothing really blew me out of the water. It was kind of exactly what it said it was going to be like all along. And because of that, I feel like I could just see A to Z like very, very easily. And this plot itself just, just did not scale very much. That being said, I do feel like book one is like an origin book. The end, like I projected, did have kind of an interesting, like I'm talking like the last paragraph was like kind of interesting. And I'm like, hmm, that's intriguing. Um, but I don't know, I just felt like there could have just been more oomph in the plot. And I also felt like the writing could have been like more stylized like I would anticipate from Holly Black. I will for sure be reading more books that come out in this because I didn't dislike it. It just wasn't like a five star read. It was more like a three, three and a half star read for me. Like it was good, just wasn't great. And I wanted it to be great. So the search continues for the fantasy book with like a good dash of romance or angst that's gonna carry me through. But yeah, this was good. Just wasn't as stellar as I was hoping, so. There you go, guys. That is the end of the vlog. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you soon with another video soon.